Today we're going to learn about manometers. A manometer is an instrument that's used to measure pressure. Uh, what's used is mercury, uh, the only liquid metal, and it's put in a tube. So first we're going to talk a little bit about atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is a result of air being pulled toward the earth by gravity. It's a weight, it's, so it's basically the weight of air. At sea level, air pressure is about 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, we know atmospheric pressure changes when the weather changes. So, like when they say a low is approaching, we know that the pressure is actually decreasing. Uh, this, and this often occur, occurs in a conjunction with the storm. Uh, and it varies with the altitude, too. For example, if you're in Breckenridge, Colorado, which is about 9,600 9, feet above sea level, instead of the air pressure being 760 millimeters of mercury, it's about 520 millimeters of mercury. So they say the air is thinner, which means there's actually a, a smaller column of air pushing down on you. So, for example, you see in the, the illustration up here, this, this uh, man standing at sea level, but if he were to go up in altitude, there's going to be a much smaller column of air pushing down on him. So we use the examples of balloons a lot when we talk about pressure. So when you have a balloon you blow up, the, pr the internal pressure of the balloon, PB stands for pressure of the balloon, is the internal pressure given by the gas molecules colliding with the inside of the skin of the balloon. Conversely, the PA, which, we, which we'll call the pressure of the atmosphere, is going to be the impact of all the gas molecules in the atmosphere colliding with the outside skin of the balloon. We don't really typically think about air pressure until it changes. For example, our ears pop when we're in, a, when we, uh, in an airplane or in an elevator and we rapidly change altitude. We also use air pressure every time we actually use a straw because what happens when we drink through a straw, we actually decrease the air pressure in the straw by removing air and then the, actually the pressure of the atmosphere pushes the liquid up through the straw and that's how we drink. Now the barometer is what we're going to look at first. Now the barometer was actually discovered by Taurus, Taurus, uh, this is called the Torricillian barometer. It was actually invented in 1643 by Evangelista Torricilli. He was a student of Galileo. Uh, now the way this uh, barometer is made, it's, it's, it has a glass tube that's filled with mercury. Now, initially it's completely filled with mercury and then it's immersed in a dish of mercury. Now what happens is all, all the mercury actually doesn't leave the tube. We'd expect maybe the mercury to all leave, but all of it doesn't leave. Now, so why doesn't all the mercury leave the tube? So the reason we find that mercury doesn't leave the tube is actually the pressure of the atmosphere that's pushing down on the mercury outside in the dish. And so what they determined is how high the column of air is, which in this instance is 760 millimeters of mercury, is proportional to the pressure of the atmosphere that's pushing down. And so we often, remember we use a formula of pressure equals force, which is we represent with that letter F, over area. And so, and we say the force applied is divided by the, the area. Now both of those are dependent on the size. So for example, when we do these problems, you need to remember uh, really four conversion factors. Uh, those are that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters mercury or 760 tor. Remember we just said that the barometer was invented by Torricelli uh, and that's actually where the idea of when we say tor, that's where the idea of tor, the name tor came from. It's also equal to 101.3 kilopascals. Hopefully you guys remember what kilo means. Kilo means a thousand. So anytime you have something kilo, it's a thousand times bigger than whatever the base unit is. So when we say we have a thousand pascals, that's, that's actually to equal to one kilopascal. And we're going to use that as well. So at sea level, all these three are equal, and we're going to use these as conversion factors when we go back and forth between the units. So let's first, let's start with one example problem. We're going to do three problems. This is our first. At Mount Everest, uh, at, which is uh, 29,028 feet above sea level, it's the world's tallest mountain. The normal atmospheric pressure at this altitude is point 308 atmosphere. Convert this atmosphere, this pressure to millimeters of mercury and convert it to kilopascals. So this will give us a chance to use those four conversion units. So to do the first problem, what you do is you'd set up and you'd say the atmospheres, then you'd, you'd do the conversion factor of one atmosphere over 760 millimeters of mercury. The one atmosphere cancels and you simply multiply the 0 0.308 times the 760 and you get a pressure of 234 millimeters of mercury. Notice this is uh, 
extremely much, uh, quite a bit smaller than the 760 millimeters mercury we're used to. Next, let's look if we're going to change it to kilopascals, or actually to pascals. I did it to pascals in this question, so we're just going to change that to pascals right here. Uh, so what we did is we first multiplied by the atmospheres to pascals. So, so we'd say one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 pascals. Atmospheres cancels. And then we want to change pa kilopascals to pascals. So when we do that, the kilopascals cancel, and then we and we multiply by 1,000 pascals. So to get this answer, we multiply 0 0.308 times 101.3 and then times 1,000. That gives us an answer of 31,200 pascals. Notice we've kept this in three significant figures. I'm not sure if you remember where, where Mount Everest is. It's in the Himalayans. It's on the border of Nepal and Tibet. And the first person to actually reach Mount Everest was in, in 1953 was Sir Edmund Hillary. He actually went with a local, one of the local Sharpays. It's the uh, local people who live close to the mountain. Normally, whenever they do an expedition, the local people to the mountain, they usually do some animal sacrifice because they consider it a, a holy mountain. One reason it's such a quest to do this mountain is you can see the pressure is so much lower that when they breathe, when uh, the hikers breathe, there's so much, a uh, much smaller amount of oxygen in the air as opposed to where we normally are at sea level. So let's start our study of manometers. We really want to put manometers into two categories. We have the closed-end manometers, which we see there. That's one category, so we'll say that's one type. And the second type we see here, which is the open-end manometer. Now, both of these basically work the same way. The opened end is, we'll probably see those a little bit more often, but the closed end are actually the easiest to calculate. In the closed end uh, manometers, the pressure of the gas is ba basically the height of the mercury in the, in the column of the tube because there's no force acting against it. So when the gas is in the container, we just look at that height, and that tells us actually the, the pressure straight out of the gas. So that's for the closed end. Now in the opened end, the pressure of the gas could either be equal to, higher than, or lower than the atmosphere. Now in the first one, we see the, the gas is actually pushing less than the atmosphere. Because th those think of a tug of war as an atmosphere pushing down, and the gas also pushing down. Now you notice the atmosphere has a bigger force and is able to push the mercury higher than the, than the gas. And so for that reason, if we want to get the pressure of the gas this time, we'd say the pressure of the atmosphere minus the height of the column of the mercury, because we'd be taking this to the other side. So we'd have to subtract when, when the pressure of the gas is lower. And then in the examples, the, the figure shown in C, the, this gas in this container, the pressure is actually higher than the pressure of the atmosphere. You see that the gas, when it's pushing down, can push the column of mercury higher than the atmosphere can. So the difference in the height of the column of the mercury would be added to the atmospheric pressure to determine height, height or the pressure of the gas. So let's do a couple examples. Let's look at two more, uh, com some more illustrations. These are both closed in manometers. In this one, we see the pressure. This is actually a vacuum, and so there's no gas in there. And so the pressure of the gas is zero, and the vacuum has zero pressure. But in the next one, we see that the pressure of the gas is 1. But notice, the pr in this one, you're going to look actually just at the pressure of the gas, which is 1 atmosphere. And then this height of the column of the mercury would give you the pressure of the gas. It's all you look at. Now, I hopefully you can guess what this height of the column of the mercury would be. Since it's 1 atmosphere, this height should be exactly 760 millimeters of mercury. So that's a closed end. You look just at the height. Next, these are both open-end manometers. In the first situation, we see the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere. Now, for this, we're assuming that the pressure of the atmosphere is actually 760 millimeters of mercury because we know the, the pressure of the gas, they, wrote, they labeled that as one atmosphere. So the pressure in which this gas is pu pushing down is 760. And the gas would be on, I'm sorry, on the right-hand side here. And then the pressure of the atmosphere, we just call this PA, so the pressure of the atmosphere is going to be equal to, we'll say this, the pressure of the gas which is pushing down from the other side because the column of the mercury is exactly the same. In the other one we see in this illustration, we see the pressure of the gas is actually pushing higher. So when this pressure of this gas pushes this way versus pressure of the atmosphere pushing down, the gas is able to push the mercury up actually 760 millimeters of mercury higher. That's actually twice as high as a pressure of the atmosphere. And so we see that the pressure of this gas is two atmospheres as opposed to one atmosphere because it's double 
at 760, the height of the column Mercury is 760. So you add those two together, basically we have two atmospheres. So let's do a couple of sample problems. The first one, calculate the pressure of the gas in tor atmospheres and kilopascals. So first let's do this in tors. Now first we have to determine is the pressure of the gas higher than the pressure of the atmosphere. So if you see if the, the atmosphere pushing down and the gas on the right pushing down. Now you see the gas is actually not pushing as much as the atmosphere. So for this you'd have to subtract. It's important for this when you subtract the, the this difference in height, this height right here, from the pressure of the atmosphere. So to find it in Tor, remember that's the same as millimeters of mercury, we're just going to do a subtraction. So we'd say 760 minus 118 equals 642 millimeters of mercury. And we, we could also assume that's the same number in Tor, and so that would be 642 Tor. So that would be the pressure of the, of the gas in millimeters of mercury, and also the pressure of the gas in Tor. Now, at this point, we can just use that value and convert it to find the pressure in atmospheres and, and the pressure in kilopascals since we've already subtracted it. And we'll do that for, for B. So B, we want to change the pressure in millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. And so we'll simply use a conversion factor. We know that 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere. And so that cancels out. And so we divide six, four, 642 by 760, and we get a pressure of the atmosphere is 0.845 atmosphere. So it's just a little bit less atmospheric pressure. Next, let's change it to kilopascals. And for that, we'll say 642 millimeters mercury divided by 760 and then times 101.3. Once again, the millimeters mercury cancel and our final units will be kilopascals. And for this, we get 856 kilopascals. So once again, notice that both these are all these values are a little bit lower than standard atmospheric pressure because we had to subtract because of the pressure of the gas was lower. Now let's look at the opposite situation. Calculate the pressure of the gas in Tor atmosphere in kilopascals, but this time we see the gas that's in the flask. We call this, this would be pressure of the gas, so I want to label that P of G, and then the pressure of the atmosphere, so we're going to call this P of A. So for this one, pressure of the gas is greater than pressure of the atmosphere, so we need to add the difference in the height of the column of the mercury. So the first is simply addition because we want to find it in Tor, which is the same as millimeters in mercury. So what we'll do is we'll take 760 and add the 215 to it, and we get 975 millimeters of mercury. And we know that's actually the same as the value in Tor, so the value in Tor would be 975 Tor. Now to change that to atmospheres, we'd simply do a conversion factor. And we'd say 975 millimeters of mercury, and then multiply that by the conversion factor when atmosphere over 760 millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury cancel, and we get a value that's greater than standard atmospheric pressure, again, 1.28 atmospheres. So that's our value in atmospheres. We have these two values, millimeters of mercury and Tor. And one last one. Let's change it to kilopascal. So we'll start with a 975 again. And this time, we'll once again multiply by 101.3 over 760 because we know those are equal. Millimeters of mercury cancel. And so 975 times 101.3 divided by 760 gives us 130 kilopascals. And so that would be the pressure in kilopascals. Don't know if you have any questions. Thanks.